Hey guys, I'm Dave and welcome to the Weird Kids Show. It's so good to have you here today. Well, this is the part three of my three-part series on my first latex mask, okay? If you're just coming in now, you're going to want to go back and watch parts one and two and then come back over here and watch this. Uh, yeah, this is my first mask ever I've ever made out of latex. In fact, it was my first mask ever using wet clay and uh, molding and uh, pollen and everything else. So this is what we got. That's my first mask. Uh, I didn't want to go too crazy with the sculpt because uh, it could very well easily be lost during the molding process if I didn't do it correctly and I almost didn't do it correctly. I I locked out but uh, it was a bit hairy there because I'd never used Ultra Cal 30 before. But anyways, here we are. We're ready to turn this into a wearable creature, a mask, okay? So the first thing I'm going to want to do, because I can see that there's remnants of baby powder on this thing, uh, might have been when my daughter uh, was... Uh, messing around with the the brush I use for the baby powder. She wants to help daddy. She's only two and a half years old. She's going to be three next month in December. Uh, she really wants to help daddy and she doesn't know if she's doing any harm when she's uh, spreading that baby powder around with that paintbrush. But we really don't want that on there because when it comes time to paint this thing we really don't want any kind of remnants of anything on there. So, some alcohol. Now that we can get it, this stuff was like gold during uh, quarantine. You couldn't find it anywhere along with the hand sanitizer and all that stuff. So, it's pretty abundant now. So, yeah, I'm just going through and wiping, wiping this thing down good. Getting rid of any kind of dirt or uh, any kind of debris or powder or anything that would have been left over when I pulled it from the mold. Okay, I can see some in the cracks there. And it seems to be coming off okay. Alright, so got them cleaned up and he's ready to go. So the first thing that I need to do though, I need to put some I need to put some straps on this thing. Okay? Now there's two ways of I guess you can do it, or a number of ways really. Um, there's uh, there's a you can do a sock mask where you take a painter's mask and attach it to the mask and then put a wig on or a draping burlap or whatever it is that you want to use. Uh, or you can use Velcro. I think Ed Edmonds from Distortions Unlimited uses Velcro. Or you could use heavy duty elastic. Okay, and that's what I decided I'm going to go with. And then you need one of these. This is a leather hole punch. Okay, you can get these on Amazon. I think I paid around $10 for this. If you get it at Hobby Lobby, you're going to pay more. They, they charge quite a bit for their stuff. And then I needed a rivet set. This I got on Amazon as well. It was only 10 bucks, And we got these little rivets. It comes with a, a punch so that you can hammer it together. We're not going to use that. We're going to use... I got some needle nose here. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and crimp them together. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and take this mask, I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to attach one end first, on this side, I'm going to hold it on my, put it on my face, and run the elastic around the back of my head, and then line it up to figure out where to cut it, uh, and then, um, you know, allow, give or take, uh, so it's not too tight, but yet it's not too loose either. Uh, this way it could be adjusted for different size heads. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, once I get the elastic lined up where I want it, 
I'm going to take this hole punch and I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole through there and then I'm going to feed one of these long uh, let's see in one of these I don't know if you can see that one of these long rivets through the hole I created and then I'm going to put the cap on the back side and then I'm going to crimp it together so I'm going to do this strap and then I'm going to come back I'm going to show you but we're going to do another strap that's going to go from the top and loop around the bottom strap that way you get some extra security so hang tight I'm going to do that and we're going to come back and see what we do next and we're back and we're back okay and this is what I ended up with alright so I punched the holes uh, and then I guess I could have got away with two rivets but I wanted to make sure that this thing was sturdy and held together real good for years and years to come so I put three you know quality you gotta put quality into your work so um, but I'm not just satisfied with that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a strap that goes from the top and then loops around here all right so it's gonna be like a cross section uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and we're gonna come back and I'm gonna slip it on this thing and then we're gonna get ready to paint the front part all right guys so hang tight thank you for being here all right guys and we're back and this is what we got here okay so I put three rivets on the top three rivets on the side, three rivets on this side and then I just make like a little loop and I put three rivets there so it's it's secure alright now I can put it on but I can also slide it on our head here so we can start getting ready to paint this thing What am I going to paint it, you ask? That's a good question. I've given it some thought. And I think I want to go... I think I want to go with a... A grayscale. Um, turn them into like a demon. Okay? Um, now for the paint... You're not going to just use acrylic paint. For those new people here that don't know anything yet about mask making. You are not going to have success with uh, acrylic paint. Uh, you have to have a special paint that contains latex. Okay? A common recipe that a lot of people that make high volumes of masks will do is they'll go to Home Depot and they'll buy the sample bottles and have their colors mixed and then they will mix a, I guess, some people have different recipes but I roughly a 50 50 uh 50 percent uh casting latex and then the 50 percent uh latex home paint interior uh paint and you mix it together and then you uh it enables you to paint your mask and then it'll stretch without cracking if you just paint it with acrylic paint when you stretch it it's going to crack uh i'm going to eventually go the route of buying and making my own paint uh, from Home Depot sample bottles but for my first run I wanted to play it safe and I just went ahead and I bought some monster makers already made uh, latex paint okay uh, this stuff is a bit water I got to play around with it a little bit um, it's a lot more runny than say acrylic I'm so used to painting with acrylic but this stuff here is a lot more runny so uh, I'm not gonna bore you with this part here because basically all I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some black in here I'm gonna do some painting I'm gonna show you the consistency so I'm gonna put some black in here and that's what I'm gonna use for my base coat alright uh, I think pretty much no matter what Black is a good go-to. I, I like to use my black or my burnt umber. I haven't quite figured out how to mix the uh, burnt umber 
So you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but as soon as I put that brush on there, it start to get like some drippage. Uh, like runny. It's a lot more uh, thinner than a lot of paints I'm used to using anyways. Maybe you're not. Maybe you have more success with the I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cover them rivets. Just laying a coat down. I want to just get everything completely covered. Yeah, even in the teeth, in between the gums, everything. Everything's going to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Give it a little chance to dry. And then we're going to come back. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. So hang tight, guys. All right, guys. And we're back. And I just went ahead and just did an uh, all-black base coat. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you one thing that I knew, but basically I'm experiencing for the first time. Uh, I have a whole slew of paintbrushes. I have a lot of paintbrushes. I have some good quality paintbrushes. And I take care of them. You know, when I'm done painting with my acrylics and stuff, I'll wash them out and clean them up and everything and make sure the tips are straight and sharp. And then I'll put them away in a special place. Um, forget about that when it comes to working with latex paint. And I'll tell you, I've been using, uh, I'm using chip brushes, okay, for the big areas. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but after a while, you start to get these little rubber gummies. We'll call them gummies. And it starts to get all clogged up. And uh, I have soaked it a little bit in uh, alcohol and stuff to try to slow down the process, but um, you're going to go through a lot of paintbrushes, okay? Um, if some of you experts have solutions to keeping your brushes clean and not have to go through so many then I would love to hear it in the meantime these one inch chip brushes are relatively cheap and get them at Walmart I imagine you can get them on Amazon in bulk for pretty cheap and so I anticipate on going through a lot of these and I did buy a lot of these and I also bought these these are really cheap although they're not good I'm going to have to sacrifice a good brush to get some of these finer details around the you know the teeth and gums and everything but for the big area we're good okay the chip brush all right so I still got some of that black left uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the monster makers uh, mask paint I'm gonna use white and I'm gonna go ahead and add some to that black not a lot just enough and start mixing it in fact I'm going to use my bad brush uh, start mixing it I want to start getting the bringing the shades up a little bit here it's not enough I'm, I want to get this next dry brush coat I want it to be almost uh, charcoal if you will that's a good uh, good shade and then we're going to get just keep stepping it up from there all right, so I got a pretty good, I like to call this charcoal. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna give me a clean brush. And just like any dry brush, I don't want a heck of a lot. And I'm gonna go ahead and start swiping it and dry brushing it on here. All right, I'm not really getting it in there too deeply. I wanna focus and basically I want that black to stay in the cracks and crevices but I want this lighter shade on top for the skin tone so we can start bringing out these details okay so that's not making much of a difference and from what I've been told to uh, latex paint for uh, mask making uh, the paint dries a darker color when it dries it it's it's uh, darker than what it actually is when it's on the mask so that's something good too so uh, a lot of people are used to it now I'm, I'm a beginner uh, I'm not pretending to know what I'm doing here I am able to paint I do know how to paint uh, but uh, this paint feels very different from anything I'm used to uh, it reacts differently it's a lot runnier than what I'm used to so uh, 
I'm just gonna be uh, it's gonna be trial and error in a lot of ways to see what I come up with here to get the desired effect but that's the beauty part of it is it's paint if, if uh, one thing I'm still able to do is if I get to too far and I'm really not happy with what I'm seeing the beauty part is is I can always just grab the black um, and start over and I notice them too we got to keep an eye on that little these cheap chip brushes love to drop fibers and I don't want fibers on my mask because it'll when that latex dries it's going to be stuck in there All right, so that's my one swipe, but that's not nearly dark enough or light enough. I can go even further and start uh, really starting to lighten this thing up here. Yeah, I like that one. That's a good. I would call this almost a seagull green now. Seagull? Seagull. Seagull. So let me go ahead and see what we can do with this. Oh yeah, that's a big, big difference. Now I don't want to go too heavy around the eyes. I like the black recesses. If you were to wear this mask at night, uh, from the shadows you you wouldn't see the eyes uh, I like that or you know uh, if you're working in some kind of a specific lighting I think this mask would work good too with some contact lenses just to bring the whole ensemble together but uh, what you're gonna see here uh, and this stuff here when it's uh, when it's a light I notice it just doesn't, you have to really work it in. It almost, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's almost like it's beating on there or something. It's, a, it's definitely a new experience for me. So I'm fine, I'm having to really work this stuff in. Trial and error though, you know. Uh, I like this, it's addicting, but I have a long ways to go, and that's the beauty part is, is that there's no time limit, uh, don't rush yourself, uh, take your time, uh, get, get a feel for the paint, what you're going to have to, and then, you know, and then too, you're going to see how it dries. So it's all, so I'm going to get a new experience here, and then once I get used to it, then I'm, I'm going to be able to know what I can and can't do. And I don't have an airbrush right now, so, uh, you know, that's a whole new avenue. I've never used an airbrush before, that's a whole other uh, can of worms that I'm willing to open, uh, but... For this one here, I don't have it, and I'm not ready for that yet. I have to uh, see what this paint does first. All right, so I'm just working it in. It seems to be taking it in good. I'm putting pressure on there, and it's working and blending it in. So now we're starting to get a lot lighter shade here. I'm starting to okay, but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going. Uh, I'm not liking how that black is uh, acting, so I'm going to go ahead and pour some new, get a whole new batch going here, of, uh, but this time I'm going to really start lightening it up even more. I might even add like some subtle colors uh, to it, to see how that all translate. I'll take my bad brush and get it mixed. Okay, let's 
some more white. Put some more white. An awful lot of paint here. Um, I think I'm going to go with the acrylics. Um, now, from what I've been told is you can take acrylic paints uh, and then mix the latex with that as well. Um, to me, that sounds like a, I love acrylics, although the latex changes the properties of the la of the uh, acrylics, makes it a lot. You know, it's going to be a lot more watery, uh, but. The end result is going to be that uh, you know I'm going to be able to have the colors that I really want and need um, to do to do what I want to do. So let me try this. It's not that much lighter. I'm liking. Uh, so this guy, I think he's going to be some kind of a demon. And uh, you can go, you know, the uh, the beauty part about this particular mask that I sculpted is uh, I didn't have a specific character in mind when I started doing this guy. Uh, I think it was more of a, you know, uh, just pushing clay around and then just kind of seeing where it took me uh, and then it all ultimately ended up turning into this guy here uh, but looking at him now okay see I want that that's a I gotta excuse my head it's in the way I gotta that was a little bristle brush bristle and I didn't want that um, what what I what, what I'm realizing now is that this guy could be a lot of different things, you know. Uh, he could be a demon. He could be a orc. He could be. Um, you could, I could add stuff to him. Um, you could even make him a clown, I guess, if you wanted to. Put a nose on him and uh, painted his face up in that uh, clown color scheme. But uh, for this one here, it's going to be a demon. And I already got uh, some little extra bells and whistles that I'm going to incorporate into him um, that I'm excited to use for this, my first mask. And I hope you like it too. I hope you find this helpful. And like I said, I hope that if there's anyone watching this uh, that's never sculpted, never made a mask before, never worked with latex or wet clay or uh, and is just lacking confidence and are apprehensive about taking this journey, uh, it is a little daunting. Uh, I think it's daunting mostly because it's expensive. The materials cost a lot of money. And um, when something costs you a lot of money, it's harder to accept defeat. Um, if I if I was making a sculpture with Sculpey and it dropped on the floor, uh, yeah, I was, I'd be disappointed. But uh, what uh, six dollars for a brick of Sculpey? You know, I can always just go back and start over again and make it again. But uh, with this process, once you've created your character out of the wet clay, uh, that's only half the battle. Uh, the next step is molding it and then doing it in such a way to where you first capture all your detail, but most importantly, that you don't damage the sculpt. Um, if you're careful, there really shouldn't be a reason why you damaged the sculpt. However, uh, if you do have some kind of a mishap, you could potentially have ended up wasting money on the Ultra Cal 30 for one, uh, and then lost your sculpt. 
it's gone forever and I know you could end up spending days or weeks on a sculpt and uh, who wants to you know it's heartbreaking I would think it was heartbreaking and that was my fear uh, going into this and that's also my rationality for not doing something super elaborate because uh, I want to do elaborate stuff I love monsters and I've got a lot of uh, probably uh, the, the term unsettling ideas in my head <laughs> for monsters uh, but I just didn't want to put all the time and effort into creating this elaborate monster for my first sculpt first mask to have it be all in vain if something happened during the molding process so uh, as a beginner to another beginner I would suggest not trying to sculpt the next masterpiece uh, when you're doing your first mask uh, Alan Hops did help me he uh, when I, I shared uh, early versions of this mask, he, um, you know, he did tell me I needed to use a reference material, and that is probably something you're going to want to do. I didn't use any reference material until I had talked to Alan a little bit, and then he had suggested that, and so what I ended up doing was um, checking out some pictures of uh, the Phantom of the Opera specifically Basil Gogo's uh, famous monsters of Filmland uh, painting of what would it be Lon Chaney Sr. as the Phantom um, just loosely just to look at some key elements you know this isn't the Phantom Although now that I told you that, maybe you're able to see it a little bit in there. Um, but like I said, this guy can be anything. But back to what I was saying. Uh, if you are wanting to try this for the first time, uh, jump in, man. Don't be afraid. Jump on in and take the risk and do it. Uh, take your time. Uh, don't just watch this, you know. Uh, watch the pro the pros, you know. Watch uh, Ed Edmonds Monster Labs. Watch uh, Alan Hops's uh, Stilt Beat Studios. He does uh, live streams nearly every night. He does a YouTube Wednesday, and uh, the guy's been doing it for all his life. So um, he's not going to steer you wrong, and he does have a plethora of tutorials on how to make molds uh, painting latex pouring um, detailing everything everything you can imagine okay so uh, hopefully I help you to encourage you to push you to the edge to where you're willing to jump off in the abyss but because it costs so much it, I'm encouraging you to do your research okay just don't follow this is how I'm doing it uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that are like oh man I wouldn't do it that way oh you don't you know but this so far this is my first experience and I may end up changing how I do things who knows we, we, we'll see but uh, yeah anyways it's worth it trust me it's worth it and it's fun um, this is my creation uh, if I take care of this um, I'll have this forever, you know, really, I mean, I know that latex eventually will start to, uh, like, dry out and uh, crack, and, um, because it is a organic material, if you will, so, uh, but I should have this for many, 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 many years to come, alright, so now I just added some more white, and I'm just going back in again. Dry brushing. And, uh, there again, I'm not doing too much around the eyes and the recesses of the eyes. I like that dark look. Just getting a 
Let's see. Coded. All right, so I'm going to keep at this, guys. I'm going to just keep putting layers and layers, and then uh, um, I'll come back. I'll show you what I, what I ended up with. So hang tight, guys. I appreciate it. All right, guys, and we're back, and this is what I ended up with here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, what I did was, like I said, I started with a, a black uh, base coat, and then I uh, just started adding white, making a charcoal, dry brushing it, and then just adding white and stepping it up, stepping it up, stepping it up until I um, got to the point of where I, okay, the, there's enough shading. Um, and then what I did was I took some yellow and then I mixed it in with that gray, that light gray, and it made this, um, let's call it a lighter olive okay and then I dry brush that on there and that's to give him his uh, skin color and texture and everything and I like that I think I'm gonna stay with that uh, you can do some uh, feckling I guess you can call it where you take um, I'm gonna use a paintbrush I don't know if I'm gonna do it on this one but basically you dip your brush in paint and then you do that to just get the freckling uh, all over it. I, I might do that at the end. I don't know. But for now, I'm going to do the the gums and the teeth. And so for that, I need to get a finer brush to get in there. Uh, I'm going to mix some black and red to make kind of a maroon for the gums. And then I might go in there with some lighter color and stipple it to, uh, you know, give it some character. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix up some uh, white and brown uh, for a base coat on the teeth. And then start stepping up with white and yellow and then just kind of and So uh, I'm going to play around with this. Uh, and I might check in, check back in periodically to show you where we're at. But uh, uh, so yeah, red, red and black uh, first mixture for the gums. So I'm going to do that first. We'll see here in a bit. All right, guys, and we're back. All right, so uh, I think I'm done with the paint. What I did was I took black and red and mixed it in and made like a rouge and painted the gums. Uh, and then I went back over with a, like a lighter. I mixed some more white and red, made like a pink and just kind of like dabbed it and dry brushed it and worked it in until I was happy with the gums. Uh, the teeth I did, um, I took a mixture of brown uh, with some white and some yellow and mixed it up, made a dark base first. And then I went in, just started to dry brush until ultimately I ended with a, with a white like dry brush over the teeth. So I'm happy with that. Um, and I also had these like little wounds here. I just uh, used black and red. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some two-part epoxy. This is JB Weld Clear Weld. Okay, and it's I like this because it's got this little syringe head and a little spiral uh, tubing inside so that your materials are kept separate until you're ready to uh, mix them. So I'm going to mix them up, and that's where these uh, cheap brushes come in handy uh, to mix it up. And I'm going to go ahead and coat the inside of the mouth, the teeth, to give it a, a wet look. And I'm going to dab some on these look, like uh, little wounds up here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and get ready for the hair. So we're almost there, guys. We'll see you here in a second. All right, guys, and we're back. So, yeah, so I went and mixed that two-part epoxy in, the, and as you can see, I painted it all in the mouth, and then I dabbed some up here on the wound, so now it's got a wet look to it, and that won't take too long to dry. So I'm going to 
allow that to dry, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the hair. What I decided was to just go with some like long black hair. Maybe I'll put a braid or two in it. But um, this is just one of those wigs that they were selling at Walmart. Man, in fact, actually, I got this for like uh, almost like 90% off when the Halloween stuff went on sale after Halloween. Uh, but even uh, retail, $3.98. I guess it won't break the bank. And uh, it's nice long black hair, and it's got a, a wig cap already attached to it. So what I think I'm going to do is physically make this wig part of the mask. Okay, and uh, glue it to the glue it across here, glue it all the way around, and then even attach it. To the straps and how am I going to do that I'm going to use 100% clear silicone okay uh, this is what Ed Edmonds uses Alan uses this stuff uh, and it uh, adheres really well and it dries clear uh, so basically what we're going to end up with is pretty much a over the head mask that's going to have the hair and everything attached and all incorporated in there but what I'm also going to incorporate into there, which is a cheat, because I didn't make them, and that's these horns. I'm going to put some horns on them, too. Uh, and then maybe even, maybe, I'm going to see how it translates, but maybe a nose ring. So we're going to see, we're going to put this thing together, but I'm going to go ahead, and basically all I'm going to do let me show you this wig here I'm gonna get this uh, hair net off uh, inside is if I can find the inside where are we at here uh, it's got the skull cap built right into it okay it's right here and then all I'm gonna need to do is okay so that's the front is I'm gonna need to uh, first of all I need to put the hair up the other way um, all I'm gonna need to do is fit it on here I need to dry fit it first okay once I get it in the position I want it to where it looks natural then I'm gonna go ahead and start lifting up the cap and then putting in the silicone and then I'm going to use the back end of a brush to smooth it down okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, and then I'll check back here with a second to explain you how it went and uh, I can show you pinpoint the exact areas where I went so hang tight guys all right guys and there we have it um, yeah I jumped ahead wasn't too sure what I was gonna do so I just started playing around with some things um, I'm gonna explain to you exactly what I did so yeah I, I got the uh, the horns attached and I used um, some super glue to tack it in the middle but then I put silicone around the edges uh, the super glue is to just tack it into place to give the silicone uh, a chance to cure and I put something here like a little table and then I had a bottle balancing it waiting it for it to dry imagine I can use hot glue uh, maybe I'll do that next time because then it would be more permanent or instantaneous if you will uh, then I I gave this guy some braids on the side uh, tied them off with some like primitive I don't know I, I like the primitive look and then I gave him a goatee as you can see now this isn't the same wig material as this this is this braid um, extension 
if you will, hair that uh, it comes in packages like that. You can get it at like beauty uh, supply stores. Uh, this is called Yaki Perm, okay, and it's a uh, really nice quality. It feels like hair, looks like hair. Uh, and so what I do is I cut some strips and then using, the, I put some clear silicone along there and then uh, make a square edge with my scissors and the hair and I hold it up there and then I just rub it on with a piece of wood or uh, Ed Edmonds uses a ruler. Uh, you want something to just work the silicone into the hair uh, and then you just, after a bit, when it gets a chance to cure a little bit, pull the extra strands off and add more as you want until it's completely filled out so yeah there's this little goatee and then I took some just some primitive wooden beads uh, tied around his little goatee there and just put some beads on um, and then I took some of the Krylon uh, clear matte uh, sealant and give it a good coat um, I'm happy I'm very happy with how he came out. I mean, uh, for my first mask, uh, really got to step off into the abyss, into this thing, and really experience what what it takes from A to Z on making a mask uh, all the way up to the very end, uh, where I would consider this now a finished product. Now, I could do some, uh, what I talked about earlier, some freckling um, I think I'm gonna hold off on that on this one you know but that's the beauty part of it is is I like it now uh, two weeks from now a year from now uh, three years from now I might look at this thing and go you know man I wish I had done this um, I want to add that or I could do a complete overhaul it doesn't matter it's up to you you know uh, but uh, I, I'm right now I'm happy with how this guy came out and uh, I hope you like them too, so. Thank you for joining us today on this mass making adventure. If you haven't done so already, like and subscribe and hit the bell. The bell is going to inform you when I upload another video and there is so much more to come. Please. Check out my Brothers in Arms, The Trio of Terror, which is myself, Keith from Cobwebs and Candlesticks, and Vic Springston from Monster Misfits. And until next time, my fiends, I appreciate you. Peace.